One of the, the mottos of Georgetown, um, a Jesuit, part of the Jesuit identity is to be men and women for others. And that's something that everyone who works here, whether you're, um, or everyone who's a part of the community, whether you're a student just coming on board for your freshman year, or you're a staff member getting oriented, um, a Jesuit priest will come and talk and say, you know, this is a motto at Georgetown, being men and women for others is something we try to live out through our work here. So um, that is something that has always been extremely important to me. I see. Georgetown is a place with a soul. It's not just a place to work. It's something that's motivated um, by a higher calling to reach out in your community and to give back. So there's many opportunities for community service at Georgetown. Um, the Center for Social Justice Research and Teaching drives a lot of the student engagement in the local community, but many other student clubs, um, organizations um, take part in it. For the Berkeley Center, what really has um, put our engagement into community service and working with partners in the community has been this White House initiative, the President's Interfaith and Community Service Campus Challenge, which has been a real opportunity to connect um, and lift up the work that's already happening on campus um, but and form new partnerships and really deepen what we're doing in the community. So, for example, the Berkeley Center partners with the Center for Social Justice, with the President's Office, with Campus Ministry, with diverse student groups like the Muslim Students Organization or um, the Student Government Group or Women's Studies. And we might organize a day of service like we did for Martin Luther King Jr. Um, Remembrance Week. Um, one Saturday, a snowy Saturday, we had um, almost 150 people sign up. We went out um, to a senior center in Southeast DC and worked with the senior residents who did everything from cleaning apartments to looking at photo albums and reminiscing and just hearing their stories, people who'd actually marched with Martin Luther King Jr. or seen the riots happening in DC. Um, and it was wonderful because it was such a diverse group of Georgetown, um, the community that went out. And then after it was over, we came back and we met for lunch in um, one of the, the rooms on campus and everybody reflected on the day and what had happened. And so we really try to capture um, and reflect on the work that we're doing at a deeper level. Um, you know, this might involve videotaping it, having students write reflections. We have a great blog up on our website. Um, so yeah, just really trying to keep track of what we're doing and engage with it on a deeper level. I think the main reason I'm optimistic about the future for, for positive change um, regarding um, the promotion of interfaith dialogue, understanding, and just a greater chance for peace in the world is the students, um, is the young people of this country. The ones I specifically work with here at Georgetown are amazing. They're the main reason I love coming to work here. Um, you know, some of them are definitely searching for their faith identity. They're searching for the best way to give back. Some of them are very grounded in the tradition they grew up with. Some of them have recently switched to another tradition. Some of them may say, you know, I don't belong to any faith tradition, um, but I'm very interested in religion or spirituality. Um, that mix at Georgetown makes for a really fascinating and, and passionate intellectual conversation. And I've seen the students here take their intellectual conversations that happen in the classroom, that happen when they're a research assistant, that happen at events, take them out into the community and really put them into action. They're starting programs, they're forging really strong connections with community partners, they're, um, they're leading movements. Um, they were involved in Occupy DC, they um, have started new service projects, um, they have started interfaith dialogue groups on campus, they have reached out to other schools, um, they're getting invited to conferences, they're traveling around, they're becoming speakers are becoming leaders, so it's incredibly gratifying and inspiring to see what someone 18, 19 years old can do. When I think about myself at that age, I was not there then, so um, I'm really proud of them and really excited for what they're going to bring in the future. I don't think that the millennial generation is apathetic at all. I think it's um, it's the opposite. I think they're, they know they have to get out there, they have to make connections, they have to let their voice be heard, and they have to act um, in order to change the world.